I'm Joy Morris, inviting you to listen to True Stories of the Old West, hosted by C.R. King, a production of R.K. Enterprises. Hello, everybody. C.R. King here. Today, we're going to talk about Commodore Perry Owens and the Cattle versus Sheep Herders War. Now, Commodore is an odd name, but he was named after a 1812 war hero by his mother. At the age of 13, he ran away from home. He spent a number of years between Oklahoma and New Mexico. Then he pulled up stake for whatever reason and went to Arizona Territory. He homesteaded outside of Navajo Springs. He built a dugout and he raised purebred horses. By 1881, he was, 80, he was 28 years of age. Commodore Owens became a ranch foreman for the J.D.H. Ranch. The owner, James D. Hulk, and he had a partner. This ranch raised both cattle and sheep. It's been said that Owens killed at least two Navajo Indians for attempting to steal, and an Indian youth who also attempted to steal horses. He was tried and he was acquitted. He grew into a reputation of a man that could handle himself, a gunman. So in 1886, so well established that he ran for the election of sheriff and he won. So as of January 1887, he was the new sheriff of Apache County. Now, a feud started in 1882. It was a feud between the Grahams, Trigbergs, odd name I know. It's a feud. But because it was a cattle versus sheep and grazing land and sheep eating too much and cattle not having enough, it got out of hand. People on both sides started fighting against each other. It became a war, the Pleasant Valley War. Now, in 1888, it will end. But 87 into 88, extremely violent. This new sheriff loved his job, but he encountered a lot more than just gunplay. A lot of gunplay, that is. So... Let me put it to you this way. The newspaper there said, and I quote, Mr. Owens is a quiet, unassuming man, strictly honorable and upright in his dealings with all men, and is immensely popular, and the sheriff enjoys a reputation. His reputation, what his nickname was, was the Iron Man. The most famous gunfight that Commodore Owens got into took part when he went after Andy Cooper. Andy Cooper was a leader of the cattle faction with the Grams. He was in Holbrook, Arizona. It was September 4th, 1887. Owens approached the Believing House and demanded Andy Cooper to present himself and that he was going to take him in, in custody. There were 12 people at that house that day including Andy. Owen stood alone outside the home and against four dangerous outlaws who came out shooting. In less than a minute, all four men were dead, and a fifth man was wounded. Owens was praised as he walked through town for what he did because the people thought the, the feud or the war would be over, but it wasn't. And he was terminated. In the fall of, 80, of 92, Owens again sought the office of county sheriff. He lost, but he was appointed chief deputy. In 94, he ran again, and he was defeated. In 1893, he was appointed to the position of deputy United States marshal by William Meade, the then current territorial marshal. In 95, Commodore was again appointed, this time to sheriff 
of Navajo County by the then Governor Louis Cameron Hughes. Navajo County was brand new. He hired his nephew and they served for two years. Now, at the end of that second year, actually before that second year, a feud would end in August of 92. Tom Graham was murdered in Temple, Arizona. He was the last of the Grahams. It was not an instant death. He had a chance to name his killer, Edwin Trickberry, who shot him, as did witnesses also testified. Edwin was arrested, tried twice, hung jury, convicted, set aside for a technical problem. It was, and later, it lingered for a few years. In 95, he was dismissed. Edward would die in Globe, Arizona, in April of 18, excuse me, in April of 1904. After his term was up as sheriff of Navajo County, he and his nephew never sought re-election. He retired in Seligman, Arizona, where he opened a general store as well as a saloon. He built a house and he married a woman by the name of Elizabeth Bartlett. That was in 1902. They moved to San Diego for a time after he sold his saloon and, and moved back just after 1910. In 1919, Commodore Perry Owens died at the age of 67 of Bright's disease. That was on May 28th, 1919, and he was, again, 67 years of age. He left his wife an estate totaling over $10,000. And in those days, that was one heck of a lot of money. She moved back. Her full name was Elizabeth Jade Owens. Moved back to San Diego, and she lived a long life. She passed away on April 30th, 1945. Now, this is a very interesting point. If you go back to 1871, the Commodore appointed two of his deputies, Jake Brighton and Albert Miller, to seek out and arrest Ike Clampton. Ike Clampton? We all know who he is. So... They traveled to his ranch. He was not there. They looked for him. They came back. And there was Ike Clanton on his horse coming back home. He saw the men. He pulled out his rifle. He was on horseback. And at full gallop, he went for Jake Brighton. Well, Brighton was, again, the deputy, pulled out his rifle. He was right next to his horse. He took aim. He shot. That shot hit Ike's saddle horn, and it bounced off. Ike kept charging. He shot again. This time he hit his mark. Ike Clanton fell off his horse dead. Now, Owens was not the type to promote himself. Pleasant Valley War is almost forgotten, as well as him. But do you realize if it wasn't for the the gunfight at the OK Corral, that his gunfight where he stood off five men and killed four of the five and wounding the fifth by himself, it was because he could handle two guns equally. He didn't have one, one, one revolver, he had two. In one minute, max, he killed these men. Incredible. Well, he was considered his whole life as a very formidable opponent to outlaws. It is said that he killed 14 men in his, his career. So I'm going to leave you here to keep it in mind that this guy was one of the best lawmen of the Wild West in our history, and he deserves to be known as such. C.R. King here. Signing off. Have a good day and be safe, everybody. See you in two weeks, if not sooner. Take care. Stay tuned for next week's tale.